Hi. How many of you out there that are viewing this video need the fire of God? You know, God is a consuming fire. And how many of you need that fire today? You know, I believe that there is going to be an explosion during this video in your most inner being that you're going to be caught on fire today uh, in the name of Jesus. You know, fire meets fire. And so when we come into the presence of Almighty God, we need to have some fire in our belly. You know, I love to talk about the fire. I have fire in my bones. Just like Jeremiah said, I have fire shut up in my bones. And that is exactly, I carry the fire. I carry fire wherever I go. And in, in, this, in this time together today, as we talk about the fire in the hole, God's presence with us, then I believe that you're going to just, that flame is going to uh, be fanned and, you know, God has a fan in his hand and he's, he's fanning us today. Hallelujah. I'm believing for myself to have more fire after uh, the word of God comes forth today. Let's pray together before we begin. My name is Sherry White and we're coming to you from Fountain of Life Ministries International. I want to thank all of you for your wonderful uh, support and prayers and, and just the encouraging comments that you've been making uh, and we have been receiving uh, concerning these videos. And we know that they're by the Spirit of God, so I give uh, God all the glory for everything that's spoken, everything that's done. And I believe that today that we are going to be blessed uh, by the Holy Spirit. Let's pray together. Father. I just come to you right now for your children. I thank you, Lord, that your mercies are new every morning. I thank you, Lord, that you are the God that healeth us, that you're the God of fire. Hallelujah. I thank you, Lord, that you're going to come and you're going to minister your word to us by the Spirit of God uh, this day in the name of Jesus. And I just praise you for every viewer. Lord, open up their ears, open up their hearts that they might receive from your spirit today and hear what the spirit would say unto his church this day in Jesus name. Amen. I yield my vessel to the Holy Spirit right now. Thank you, Jesus. You know, in Ephesians chapter uh, three, uh, verse 20, it says, now unto him, him, who is him? Well, it is the Lord unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. You know, we can stop right there and be blessed by that scripture. Oh, praise God that he is able to do above what we can think or imagine. Praise God. He's able to do something with your marriage today. He is able to do something with your children today. He is able to do something with your grandchildren today. Hallelujah. He is able to do something with your ministry today. Praise the name of Jesus. And it says, let's go on. It says, according to the power or the dunamis that worketh in you and me. He's able to do it if the power is there. Hallelujah. You see, he is a mighty God. He is the creator of the universe. Sometimes I... I I think that, you know, our carnal minds cannot even comprehend who God is. Because God is a spirit. He is in the supernatural realm. You know, I love the supernatural realm. I love to talk about uh, portals and, and openings into uh, that supernatural realm where we can operate and we can receive and, and glean, hallelujah, that power uh, as being in the presence of Almighty God. Hallelujah. Well, he's able to do that according to the power that worketh in us. Hallelujah. You know, God says in the title of this, this video, this, this message today, Fire in the hole. God's presence with us. Fire in the hole. What do I mean by that? The Holy Spirit gave me this title. I just didn't think it up. 
The whole is your inner man, your spirit man. There needs to be fire in your belly, in the hole, fire in the hole. You know, I don't know a lot about mining, but such as coal mining, but there is a phrase that the miners use when there's going to be an explosion, and it's called fire in the hole. And then the explosion comes. Praise God. Some of you need an explosion in your life. Some of you have been sitting down on God and you've been dormant in your gifts. You've been dormant in the things of God. And you've said, well, there's just nothing for me to do. There's no place for me to go and minister. Let me tell you something. Get you a cassette or a CD and, and begin to preach and teach the word uh, just on that CD. And then duplicate it and give it away. Hallelujah. You do not need a pulpit. You do not need a congregation. You do not need a place to go. You can do it in your very own home. How much do you want to preach and teach the word? How much? If the preach is in you, you cannot stop it from coming out. If there's just something on the inside of you that says, I need an explosion today. I need to be, I need fire in the hole. I know that I'm speaking to some, especially some ministers out there today. That you need that. We're going to, we're going to show you how to get it. Hallelujah. It's fire in the hole. God's presence with us. That kind of sums it all up right there. The more times you come into the presence of God and He's a consuming fire, woo, you just catch on fire a little more. Oh, catch on fire a little more. And all of a sudden there's fire in the hole and there's an explosion that's fixing to happen. Hallelujah. I believe this is a word, a prophetic word for the body of Christ today that we catch on fire for Jesus and burn with the Holy Ghost. Woo! Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Hebrews 13, 5, I'm not going to turn there, but he says to us that he will never leave us nor forsake us. His fire will continue to burn on the inside of us unless we put something over it, such as carnality, such as thinking about ourselves, such as depression and oppression, such as sickness and disease, if we put those things on top of the fire, the fire will slowly begin to go out. You know, in the book of Samuel, 1 Samuel, uh, Eli was the priest. And in that first chapter, I believe it is, it says that, uh, that well, let's just go over there. I want to make sure that I have it right. It's where Samuel, the young Samuel, comes to stay with Eli. His mother gives him to Eli to train and to teach and to bring up. Hallelujah. Some of you need to be trained and brought up in the Holy Ghost. Uh, thank you, Jesus. And it says here, no, I believe it's in... Um, it's in chapter 3 of 1 Samuel. And it says here uh, in verse 3, And ere the lamp of God, or the lamp of God, was slowly going out in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of the covenant was, or that was the word of God, and Samuel was laid down to sleep. See, the prophetic word needs to get up. Hallelujah. The prophetic word needs to come forth in the body of Christ. Because see, you, the, the prophets and the prophecies carry the fire of God wherever they go and wherever they enter into, hallelujah, the people will be set on fire by the Holy Ghost. Because the prophetic word is God. 
And God is a consuming fire. And here it says that the lamp of God and where the Ark of the Covenant was, the Word of God, uh, there was no prophetic word that was coming forth as of yet. And the lamp of God was slowly going out. We don't want that. We want the fire of God to be going through the body of Christ. We want the fire of God to, to consume us. I say, fire of God, consume us today in the name of Jesus. Let there be a fire in the hole. Let there be an explosion in our inner man. Uh, let God's presence be so real and so mighty in us, hallelujah, that he is able to do exceeding above what we can ask or think. Praise the name of Jesus. If you want that today, you can have it. You can have it. All you have to do is ask the Lord. Set me on fire, Lord. Set me on fire for you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come out of those old mully grubs. Come out of that depression. I'm calling you out of oppression. I'm calling you out of sickness and disease. I'm calling you out of, of the uh, carnal realm and into the supernatural realm. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You know, in 1 Kings 18, 38, it talks about how Elijah, who was surrounded by the prophets of Baal, he said, fill up the ditches. Fill up the trenches with water. And let's see what our mighty God can do. See, Elijah knew what God could do. Elijah was one of his prophets, one of his messengers. And he said, okay, let's see our mighty God demonstrate his power to all of these that are in the world. And after they filled up the trenches and the ditches, then Elijah said, let the fire of God fall. Some of you were just set on fire right then. Elijah called down fire, and the fire of God licked up and, and consumed all of the water. Hallelujah. Oh, there's a message there, my people. Praise God, but I, I don't have time to go there. But I'm seeing it in the Spirit. As God consumes all of that water, He wants to consume you. You're made up of 90% water in your physical body. He wants to heal that breast cancer right now. I command that lump to be gone that somebody, there's, it's in your left breast and they have found it and they have said that they feel like it's cancerous and I say that that lump that, that is gone in Jesus' name, that God's fire is going in to that breast area and consuming that lump. Do not have any surgery or biopsy until they go back in and do another X-ray, CAT scan, mammogram, whatever you want to call it. Because it's gone. I saw it consumed with the fire of God. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. So Elijah called it down. You know, we can call down the fire of God. We can say, oh, the fire of God consumed that poverty. Consumed that that depression, consume that mental illness and disorder, consume that ADHD in my child, come and consume his mind, hallelujah, or her mind, but I see a little boy right now, and I see that little boy has been diagnosed with ADHD, and let me tell you something, God can move in his brain, and God can consume uh, that disorder in the name of Jesus. God can consume and touch your body and bring life back to that, that arm that you, you've not been able to use that left arm uh, very much. You, know, you cannot even raise it uh, this high. You can only raise it a little bit. God is consuming that infirmity. It's a spirit of infirmity that has caused that, that arm to be numb and, and useless. And, I, and God is consuming that infirmity right now in Jesus' name, and you'll be able to lift your arm. Just try right now. Just lift it all the way up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have to act on the word. Just bring it on up. Come on. You got it halfway there. Come on. I'm seeing you in the spirit right now. 
Come on, bring it on up. Bring it on up. This is a female. Bring it on up. Hallelujah. And as you bring it up, just say, praise God. Just say, praise you, Jesus. You're a consuming fire. You're a consuming fire. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now, just put the other one up. Oh, and just begin to praise him today. Just begin to praise the God that healeth thee. Begin to praise him. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. Every sickness, every affliction, every infirmity can be healed by God. Hallelujah. You do not have to accept any type of handicap or infirmity in your body. Uh, affliction in your body. You do not have to accept it because God is a consuming fire and He can come and He can consume that. Are you hearing me this morning? Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. You know, in Psalm 68, let's turn there. I'm getting excited. I tell you what, I don't know if you're being blessed today, but I know that I am. Oh, thank you, Jesus. The Word of God is a blessing to me. Psalm 68. Verses 1 and 2. Let God arise. Let the fire arise in the hole. There is fire in the hole. God's presence with us. Hallelujah. Let God arise in his enemies. And what are his enemies? Uh, death is his enemy. Hallelujah. A spirit of death is on a man that's listening right now. A spirit of death. Right now, God is consuming that with his fire. He is arising in, in your belly. Hallelujah. The mighty power of God is in you, brother. Receive your healing right now. Receive that fire to go on and live in Jesus' name. Let his enemies be scattered. Sickness is his enemy. Poverty is an enemy to God. Because he has given us abundant life. Praise the name of Jesus. Let them also that hate him flee before him. Your enemies are going to flee, hallelujah. When there's fire in the hole and God's mighty presence is with you, the enemy cannot stay. He has to go. As smoke is driven away, so drive them away. As wax melteth before the fire, so let the wicked perish at what? At the presence of God. This is talking about the fire, the consuming fire that makes your enemies scatter. They may come to you in one way, but they're going to scatter seven ways. Hallelujah. There's, there's a person who your house is in foreclosure right now. God is going to reverse that. He's going to show you a way to get out of that foreclosure and the bank is going to be in agreement and your house will still be there and you will still be in your house. Hallelujah. God's doing that for you right now. Ooh, glory. Thank you, Jesus. Now let's go to my main passage, which is in Daniel chapter 3, a very familiar passage of Scripture about the three Hebrew children, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You know, it says in verse 1 of chapter 3 that Nebuchadnezzar, the king, made this wonderful golden image of himself. And he said everybody in, in his, his realm had to bow down to this image. Well, these three Hebrew children, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, had fire in their belly. Hallelujah. They were in communication with God. They had, they knew about His presence. They knew how to come into His presence, into His throne room. You know, it says, enter His gates with thanksgiving and into His courts with praise. Hallelujah. If you want fire in your home today, you need to begin to praise the Lord. You need to begin to thank the Lord. Thank the Lord I've got food on my table. I've got shoes on my feet. I've got clothes on my back. I've got, I've got my uh, family, I've got my uh, my work situation. Hallelujah. There's a lot of people out of work. So if you have a job, you need to be thanking God that you have a job. They said, we're not going to bow. We're not going to bow down to anybody except our Lord. We're not going to bow down, and, and, but to the God of Israel, we will bow down. Well, this made Nebuchadnezzar very angry. And so he told in verse 19, uh, he said that, that he was full of fury. 
Nebuchadnezzar was full of anger, and the form of his vintage was changed. He got angry at Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego, and not only, you know, no longer were they his his uh, bosom buddies, if you will, uh, his friends, but they were they were. He saw them as his enemy. And it says, he commanded that they should heat the furnace seven times hotter than it would have been. And he commanded the most mighty men that were in the army to bind up Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego and to cast them into the fiery furnace. Praise God. Fire's going to meet fire, people. Oh, when there's fire in the hole, there's going to be an explosion, praise God. And that's exactly what happens in this story. In verse 22, Therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent and the furnace was exceedingly hot, the flame of the fire killed those men that took Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to throw them into the, the furnace. God's presence was already in that furnace, people, and it slew the people that were after God's children. It slew their enemies. The fire destroyed their enemies. Can you see that? In verse 23, And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down bound in the midst of the burning fiery furnace. They fell down. What do you think they were doing? They were worshiping. They were praising. They were giving thanksgiving unto the Lord. And who shows up? And then Nebuchadnezzar the king was astounded, and he rose up in haste, and he said unto the counselors, Did we not cast three men into the fire? And they said, Oh, true, O oh, king. That's what you did. He answered and said, Lo, I see four men. Woo! I see fire in the hole. I see an explosion going on. And I see the mighty presence of God is with them. He says here, and they have no hurt. And the form of the fourth man is like the Son of God. He didn't even know who the Son of God was. But it was revealed to him that it was the Son of God. You know, Jesus Christ is our Lord, our Savior, our Redeemer. And he is the one that will keep our fire burning. Keep on burning, 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 burning. Hallelujah. Just burn with the Holy Ghost. I wish somebody would just catch on fire. Catch on fire. Catch on fire. I wish somebody would just catch on fire and burn with the Holy Ghost. God says, I'll never leave you now. Forsake you. I will be with you. And he was with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And the king saw the Son of God. I call forth the sons of God. Be manifested in Jesus' name. That's part of my job, is to call forth the sons of God. And I call them fire in your life. I call down fire on your finances. I call down fire on your marriage. I call down fire to come. That there'll be fire in your home. And the mighty presence of God will be with you. Thank you for feeling